Hello and welcome to episode four of Thai Adventures. In the previous episodes, my daughter Ivy and I set off on a once in a lifetime trip from the UK to Thailand, with our destination being the island of Koh Samui. I fell ill, Ivy had to look after herself for a few days, but gradually we started to acclimatize and after some already memorable moments, we decided to take the plunge and jump into a trip to the snorkeling paradise that is Koh Tao. In this episode, Ivy and I face the reality of not booking tickets in advance, not being prepared for the tropical jungle climate, and then snorkeling in the beautiful Shark Bay. We then head out into the island and experience its breathtaking nightlife, and the following day embark on more snorkeling whilst looking forward to heading back to Koh Samui. This is my daughter Ivy. My name's David, also known as Ivy's dad. Come join us on this adventure that was just too good not to vlog. And I would just like to say, we're now into episode four. Thanks for all the views of the previous episodes, all the feedback, the subscribers. It's been greatly appreciated. This is the Kotao episode, one that I've been looking extremely forward to editing as I really felt it captured so much of Thailand and was an experience that we'll never forget. I hope you all enjoy. Morning, honey. It's time to go to Koh Tao. How are you doing? You're tired. So for this trip to Koh Tao, I think we are just going to take a small weedy case or maybe even just a rucksack or two. We've got about an hour to get ready and we've booked a cab with the wonderful cab couple from yesterday. The room is chill. Looks to be another lovely, slightly overcast, beautiful, cool, chill day. I'd estimate around sort of 28 to 31 degrees. Did you sleep okay, honey? Ah, oh, she's asleep. She's tired. So we've been using the, the um, 12 Go app, which shows the ferries from Koh Samui to Koh Tao. And for some reason, it's saying trips are not available. Try searching for another date or location. I don't know if that's simply because it's sold out Throughout the whole experience of traveling to and around Thailand so far, everything had fallen into place seamlessly. There were no unexpected queues at the airports. We could get cabs, we could change money, we could do everything seamlessly. But this was the first time where I encountered uh, something that I couldn't really find an answer to. I went online and I checked on the Tourism Thailand Reddit forum and people said, it's most likely just the app. Just go down there and you'll be able to buy a ticket when you get there. So on that basis, I thought I'm going to take a gamble. I'm going to go down to the ferry terminal. I'd already booked, whilst I was in the United Kingdom, a hotel in Koh Tao for one night. And the only thing that I hadn't really booked was just the ferry from Koh Samui to Koh Tao. And typically, every time that I check it for the last six months from the United Kingdom, I can see it's all working. I can see the timetable. I can see exactly how much it's gonna cost. But then when I'm in Thailand, the one time I need to use it, it's saying no tickets available. So anyway, we decide we're gonna take a gamble. That is our cost of our travel. Goes in there. I hold on to this storm because I need to be swept away, swept away. I'm cornered in the cold where you left me. Left again, left again. Three Oreo, 10p. 
breakfast. fruit or something i enjoyed these little times in the cab and our driver oz and his wife mel were really cool and i really liked the fact that they drove together and that mel took his bookings while oz was driving and helped with the navigation etc and it was just a general all-round nice experience they would tell us little things as we'd be driving along and of course oz got us to the ferry with plenty time to spare we listened to what he said on when we should arrive there so we were the first people to arrive at the ferry terminal Thankfully we arrived at the ferry terminal with plenty time to spare as Oz had suggested because our worst case scenario came true. Was that the whole ferry is full up. So luckily we are the first people on the waiting list. So at 12.20, it's currently 11.02, at 12.20 we need to go back to the ferry office and see if anyone's cancelled and then we'll, we'll be the first one on the list to and so the wait began. Hi, we're going from there. I think it goes to there to Co Town. We got some food for breakfast, but I was still feeling quite ill, almost like I'd gone back a day, and the uncertainty made the hour seem much longer. However, whilst waiting, a man from Koh Samui who was also hoping to buy a ticket at the counter said he'd help us get our tickets. And sure enough, after a lot of speaking in Thai with the ticket agent and all very friendly natured, unlike Heathrow, Ivy and I had our tickets. This kind man yeah. is helping us get onto the ferry. See, hey. yeah, nice, nice to meet you here. Yeah, it's lucky for today this weekend. Very lucky. <laughs> See, this is what I like about Thailand. That someone's like helping us. Oh yeah, and that man on the, in the car as well. And it was at this point when it sort of all fell into place and you realize we are in paradise and we are going to the jungle. The scenery was just breathtaking. And I knew that Ivy, who was a little bit apprehensive, she would have been more than happy to stay in Lamai. I knew that she felt, yeah, this is cool, dad. And it really was a cool, beautiful experience. I had simply never seen scenery like this. Actually, this is pretty cool. Isn't it? Extremely, look how beautiful it is. Never seen anything like it. Oh. It's so hot. It is so hot. I have got to watch, I don't burn my head. Oh my gosh. Within an hour, the ferry docked at the island of Koh Phangan, which is famed not just for its bohemian beauty, but also the full moon party where 20,000 people from around the world spend a very messy night on its beaches. I'd hoped that we would get to visit Koh Phangan, but we weren't able to do so on this trip. And I was okay with that, as I'd sort of already made my mind up that I'd probably be returning to Thailand at some point in my life. So it's on the next to-do list. Some people got off the ferry whilst others got on and we were soon continuing our journey to Koh Tao. 
Both Ivy and I were struggling with the blazing heat and I was worried that we were dehydrating. It was also monsoon season and the clouds ahead started to look much darker than they were just a few moments earlier and we were clearly heading into them. And as quick as Mother Nature had unfolded another round of drama, it just sort of faded away. It had put smiles on our faces, the rain was in fact refreshing, and in the distance, Kotal was fast approaching and it looked beautiful. But as we were fast learning, there was always another drama just around the corner, especially when Mother Nature is involved. I'm in my 50s, and when I watch the YouTube videos of people half my age island hopping, it's at times like these when I was starting to realise it's much more demanding of me than I expected. And in retrospect, if I could do it again, I certainly would do it again. But I would definitely do a few things differently. Lessons were being learned. Spirits were high, for now at least. Well, that was emotional. Look at me. we got to be in that. Look at my eyes. How are you feeling? First day. That's all I care about right now with the drink. <laughs> this is next level. Watching this footage back now, it makes me laugh how. I really didn't care by this point what I looked like. It was just a matter of if I had to wear a sheet over me, then so be it. Whatever it took to keep the temperature down. And looking back, I do realise it was a lot of this was down to me. I was the one who didn't bring water to a jungle. Kotao is a very busy place. It reminded me a little bit of London. Um, when you arrive at the terminal and there's all the hotels and all the people with the taxis and they just want to get going, it was busy. It was the busiest we'd seen in Thailand. And it's funny, we go to the most remote place and it's actually the busiest. But once we'd got past this, we then arrived at our hotel and we were able to start to settle down. Again, not without challenges, but the vibe very quickly changed to a much more serene kind of environment. That's all right, we can lose him. We take our time. I can't rush these things. Hello. Hello. Hey, cool, cool, cool. And that wasn't too hard. <clears throat> We've got two beds and another bedroom. Go in the main one. and cab. <laughs> yeah. 
Come on, Gab. Thanks. Lovely. How do we go? Yes. Down there. Brilliant. Thank you. Oh. Down that path there. Right, Ive. Shall we go down there? <clears throat> Shall we walk down first, then come back up and get all the snorkel stuff? Or go to go snorkeling? Hi guys, basically today, as you can tell, I'm wearing my normal outfit. Um, I'm in a life jacket. Basically, we're in Shark Bay in Koh Tao. It was so stressful, getting here. Hot, then storms. Oh, then chaos, not good, but we're finally here. Got a life jacket and snorkels, and we're just all the way, is it? Shark way, as you can see. We're just about to go, and all oh, the the sea is there. We're just about to do snorkeling, I'm really excited. Look at that. There's many sharks in here, but don't think our luck is going to be good today. This time it's usually turtle time. So you might some turtles. These are a little steep. Ah, oh, we are actually on a rock. How? Oh, <laughs> how are you feeling, Anne? I'm really cold. Oh, do you think we can get in down there, or should we walk round to the beach? I think walk round to the beach area, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Shame we can't get to that beach there. I want to be clear that as much as it was challenging, I really had a good time in this place. And the reviews had very clearly said the steps down to the beach are hard work and the beach is small. And again, inexperience, I just thought, oh, it'll be fine. But it wasn't really what I wanted, but I don't want that to overshadow the fact that the overall experience at the Tato Sea View Resort was a really positive one. And I also want to give credit to Ivy because when I first suggested that we go on holiday to Thailand, a year before we actually went on holiday, Ivy was not interested. We watched some YouTube videos, she saw elephants and snorkeling, and she was just like, I just don't want, that's not what I would consider a holiday at all. And I think this is the power of Thailand in as much as for a year, Ivy was scared of fish. She didn't want to do snorkeling. And only five days into the holiday, she's leading the way in Koh Tao, going into Shark Bay. Well, the sharks are sort of whale sharks. They're harmless. But Ivy was still ultimately scared of fish and she was willing to give this a go. I think even the biggest skeptic would get to Thailand and think, yeah, it is kind of cool, isn't it? It just seems to have that effect. And the snorkeling was just really, if I'm honest, the snorkeling was just mind blowing. <laughs> Take a break a minute. Okay, so be aware. Uh -huh. Remember, yeah. we might see turtles or sharks. Don't panic if you do, all right? That's all we're here for. If you do, they're not gonna hurt, they're gonna swim away. Have you got a tower? How was it? Wait. Good. It was um a fun survey. At the end, I couldn't see anything. But I enjoyed it. We went a long way. No. We went well we did. Because now so we need to go all the way back. Now we need to go all the way back. 
take a break. I thought for a good for our first snorkel, Bug saw some great footage. I was impressed. Better than I thought it would be really. We saw big fish. You're right. Oh. And that was that, our first snorkeling session or half a session was over and it was a real success first and foremost the the snorkeling gear that the hotel provided was sort of professional level snorkeling gear and it just completely changed the experience from when we were trying to get things to work a couple of days earlier in crystal bay this time it worked and shark bay far exceeded what I expected snorkeling in Thailand to be like. It was a really, really surreal kind of experience. That's why the music I put on is a bit different because it really changed the vibe and, you know, it slowed things down. And even though it was a strenuous swim with the life jackets on, they made it so much easier. So it was a really good experience for me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Ivy, you've just done some serious snorkeling. Talk to me. Yes, I was snorkeling, and but I just saw when I got down, it was really scary because there was loads of fish, and yeah. Um, but we didn't find any. Oh, my dad cut his finger like as soon as we got in. Just touched the smallest thing, and, and yeah, it was quite scary, but I enjoyed it. We didn't do. You we did really good, I. My room. You just been snorkeling all around there. How you doing, Ives? Ivy's room. Great. Alan? Bye. Oh. To be fair, they are really nice people. It soon became evident that Koh Tao was just cool. The people were cool. The place where we stayed at was cool. The whole vibe was cool. I really, really felt that Koh Tao has like a special feeling about it. It was, it was a whole new sort of lifestyle to me. And we asked the hotel driver if he would take us to somewhere where we could see a sunset. And he took us on a journey just a few minutes away from the hotel. And he took us down this tunnel and dropped us off and said, just over there. So we took a little look around. <laughs> Ivy and I had found a sunset point, but we could see down the beach that there were more people, there was clearly something happening. So we just started to walk and in that direction and more and more people were sort of heading down there. And when we got there, I was absolutely astonished at just how beautiful this was. There was a smell of marijuana in the air. Marijuana had just been legalized a couple of weeks before and clearly people were smoking and it was a totally relaxed environment and it reminded me of like the best pub garden that you can ever imagine where there are all sorts of people and everyone is happy everyone is relaxed there was no bad vibe from anyone there was no bad there was no bad atmosphere there was no grumpy customers there was it was just relaxed and completely at peace, or at least that's how I felt. I had simply never experienced this sort of atmosphere in my life. It made all of the 
effort that I had put in, the long flight, the being ill, the saving the money, the working hard in London, whatever it was, it all came together for me in this moment. Don't fall asleep before your dinner, Ivy. This is how you have dinner. And I think it also had that as well, didn't it, to dip in? Prawn spring rolls in Thailand, caught just down there. This feast, and it was and has been a feast in a beautiful, it's closing now, but in a beautiful environment where we can lay down with all our drinks to take home, a coffee to come, a mock towel, multiple Coca-Colas for Ivy, Sprites. What was it, two main dishes and two appetizers and two rice, and the whole lot was 25 pound, including the tip. How are you feeling, honey? I'm sad. <laughs> Ivy and I had a delicious dinner with the local flavours and the fresh seafood really standing out as one of the best restaurants of the holiday. The staff were also so nice and friendly, helpful, funny and relaxed. We then spent some time looking around the hotel and it's hard to explain this place. It had all these sort of knickknacks from over the years. I think it's common in Thailand and maybe more so in places like Koh Tao that it felt like you were in someone's home. There were cats roaming around, large sofas for people to relax on as they come and go. The rooms were perfectly air conditioned with lovely, comfortable beds and I slept really well. The atmosphere definitely helped me feel a little bit better, not just physically, but mentally. I obviously needed to relax and this place made me relax. The following morning, I didn't want to get up early, but I couldn't miss an opportunity to go and fly the drone. So I ventured down the steps in the blazing morning heat and I spoke to a German chap who was snorkeling with his daughter and he said they had been there for 10 days and I realised that's what I need. I needed 10 days at this place, snorkeling with my daughter at 6am. That's when you'd see the sharks for sure. Ivy and I were determined that we were going to go for a, another snorkeling session which turned out to be even better than the one before. We used the hotel's flippers, snorkels, life jacket and had the perfect snorkeling send off. There were fish as far as the eye could see. And what you don't get in videos such as this is the scale of them. All of these fish and the ones we saw the day before were big. They measured about 16 inches as a standard sort of size. It far exceeded what I expected we would see when snorkeling. So I really like the hotel. It was really good but the stairs are not good, they need lift or just not stairs like that. But I recommend coming to the Hatao CV Resort at Kotao. It's about 5, 7, 10 minute drive from the ferry port, I think that's what it's called. So yeah, I will see you when we get back to Lamai. 
because the GoPro's going to die. Please ignore that spot. So, bye guys. See you soon. Super tired. Physically, as a 51 year old, doing that walk up and down. Doing that walk up and down those steps is just impossible. <laughs> I'm sad. I'm sad to be going. Um, the hospitality, the food, the snorkeling, just the general all round um, atmosphere. Reluctantly, we had our last food at the restaurant. We said our goodbyes and we headed back to the ferry terminal where we met Paul, who was happy to see us and agreed he'd drive us back to Lamai for about 500 baht, which is about 10 pounds. It was just another thing falling into place. But what did make us laugh was that Paul had actually gone to Koh Tao to pick up some marijuana plants. So we traveled with a couple of very nice plants that got a lot of attention. And when we got onto the ferry, Ivy and I found out that there was in fact a beautifully air conditioned deck with large leather seats that we sat in and almost instantly fell asleep. And that was our experience of Koh Tao. Paul drove us back to the weekender and the 30 hour round trip was instantly a moment of a lifetime. One that I, and I'm sure Ivy, will never forget. The whole experience, the Tato Sea View Resort Hotel, the people, the sunsets, the food, the snorkeling, the cats, the sofas, the knickknacks, the fairies, everything. I give it an absolute 10 out of 10. It wasn't perfect but that's what made it perfect. And it was definitely an adventure of a lifetime.